Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we'll be discussing about Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. In my previous video in statistics playlist, I have already discussed about Pearson correlation coefficient. And we had actually understood, and the Pearson correlation coefficient is basically having this particular formula, guys, that is covariance of x comma y divided by variance of x multiplied by variance of y. Okay, and we have understood that if you focus on this particular diagram, if we have a linear property of all the points of x and y, okay, suppose we have actually discussed that if we have two independent features x and y, and suppose if x increases and y also increases, if it increases in a linear pattern or a linear way, right, at that time we will be getting our correlation as one. Okay, we can actually say that this p value will be actually one. Now you can see that all the points are linearly available over here with respect to your x axis and y axis. Usually we'll be getting as one. Suppose it is inversely proportional, like this kind of stuff, right? Uh, here you can see that it is inversely proportional, so the my, my value will be minus one. Suppose all the points are not in the linear position, and if it is in the order like when the x is increasing, y is increasing, you'll be getting the value between zero to one. And suppose if it is in the non-decreasing matter, sorry, if it is in decreasing matter, like uh, if the x increases and y decreases, at that time we'll be getting our value between minus one to zero. Now this was with respect to uh, Pearson correlation coefficient. And remember guys, if you still are looking for the video, I've already uploaded this particular video over here in statistics playlist. You can search for what is Pearson correlation coefficient, Krishna, okay? Now, the most important thing and the most better option than Pearson correlation coefficient is something called as Spearman rank correlation coefficient. Now, you can see in this particular figure, right? You can see where even my data of X and Y are not linearly increasing. You can see that it is having a non linear uh, structure or diagram. You can see over here as non linear, right? So, it, even though we know that, yes, when the X is increasing, my Y is also increasing, right? In this particular case, if I try to apply my Pearson correlation coefficient, I'll be getting a value of 0.88. But if I apply Spearman correlation, I'm actually getting it as 1. Now the main thing is that how Spearman correlation uh, correlation is actually able to get the value as 1. Now Spearman correlation, if, if I just show you the formula, and make sure guys you see Wikipedia, okay? It has wonderful content if you want to understand any maths. Now, first of all, we'll try to understand the formula of Pearson correlation coefficient. So this is my formula, okay? Covariance of x comma y divided by standard deviation of x comma y. Now, if we see the difference of Spearman rank correlation, here also we have covariance of rank of x, okay? So here you can see that instead of covariance of x comma y divided by standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y, what we are doing is that we are taking the rank of x and rank of y okay so that is the formula over here covariance of rank of x and rank of y and then we have variance of rank of x and rank of y we'll try to understand what exactly is this rank okay so all, everything is same only a minor difference here we are actually trying to find out the pearson correlation okay pearson correlation of rank of x and rank of y that is what will actually give us pearman correlation okay so here again i'm repeating guys the difference between Spearman and Pearson correlation is that here I'm actually trying to find out Pearson correlation of rank of X and rank of Y. Now the question rises is that what is rank of X and rank of Y? So for that, what we'll do is that we'll, I'll try, if I go down guys, there is a wonderful explanation about this. Here you can see that in this example, the raw data in the table below is used to calculate the correlation between the IQ of a person with the number of hours spent in front of TV per week. Okay. Now this is my X feature. This is my Y feature. In X feature, I have IQ. In the Y feature, I have hours of TV per week. Now, here you have values like 106, 7, 86, 2, 86, 2, 101, 50, 99, 28. Now, if I want to find out the correlation on this, if we apply Spearman correlation, okay, not Pearson, Spearman. So, if, if I was applying Pearson, what would happen? I would just use this particular formula, simple formula, right? Covariance of X comma Y divided by uh, standard deviation of variance of x multiplied by variance of y. I could have used this particular formula. I could have got my Pearson correlation value. Okay, it would have been positive or negative based on this data points. Okay, but in this particular case, when you see, if I want to apply the Spearman, Spearman, right? I will try to find out the first of all the rank of x and rank of y. Now, what is this rank of x and rank of y? I'll just show you. And these are the steps. What you have to do? Okay, so firstly, evaluate id square. 
to do this you have to use the following steps first of all guys we have to sort the data of the first column so x of i i have sorted it over here okay 86 97 99 like this it is in the sorted order create a new column xi and assign it the ranked values 1 2 3 till n now what does it basically say now see guys this is my smallest number right 86 is my smallest number so i'm ranking it as 1 97 is my smallest number i'm ranking it as 2 i'm just giving rank in the form of ascending order okay in the form of ascending order so this is basically my rank of x now similarly rank of y what i'll do i'll sort y okay i'll sort all the y elements with respect to this and here i'll again be giving my rank okay and remember guys this rank that you see over here i have just used one variable that is x of i okay and with respect to that i have made a rank of x of i over here but this hours tv per week right this rank that you see this now if you see this particular 20 value over here this may be the sixth highest element okay so the rank is given as six then i have 28 this is will be the eighth highest element so like this kind of ranks we will actually create okay remember we have just sorted xi we have assigned rank in ascending order in case of y again suppose 20 is the element this is the sixth highest element we are just providing the rank okay so you can see the next sort the data column and create a fourth column similarly assign ranks to this and now i have assigned the ranks to x and y now the next thing is that we create another column which is called as d of i d of i is nothing but rank of uh, sorry difference between rank of rank of xi and rank of yi okay so i'm actually calculating again let me write it properly i'm just trying to find out the difference of rank of xi and rank of yi this difference i'm actually computing so here you can see the difference uh, 2 minus 6 is minus 4 3 minus 8 is minus 5 4 minus 7 is 3 minus 3 and all these values are there and then i'm actually squaring it for squaring it i'll be getting this particular value now in order to find out the spearman spearman correlation okay we have a formula over here which i had already shown right this particular formula i had already shown if you go on the top right uh this is the formula that is one minus six multiplied by sigma d i squared divided by n multiplied by n square minus one okay now when i do this you will be able to see this particular formula now i'll be getting my uh, row value that is with respect to the rank of x and rank of y i'm getting somewhere around minus 0 0.175 okay uh, with p value as this uh, 0 0.0627128 with the t distribution the value is close to zero shows that the correlation between the iq and the hour spent watching tv is very very low so this basically shows that now don't focus on this also guys on t distribution focus on this over here you have got a value which is pretty much nearer to zero right that basically means show, shows that the relation the correlation between iq and tv hours spent is very very low if suppose this correlation was getting somewhere around 0.95 then i could say that the correlation would be very very high if if the value was somewhere pretty, uh, somewhere like minus 0.95 then this we could say that if the x is increasing y is decreasing this kind of correlation will be there for that right so by finding this spearman correlation the main advantage is that even though your data is non-linearly distributed it is basically having a non-linear shape like take this particular example over here you can you can see that it is just not linear it is non-linear right if it is increasing in this particular order it is decreasing in this particular order you can see that for this i'm having 0.92 for this i'm having minus 0.99 and i'm using i'm computing uses the same formula what i had actually shown you in the pillar structure right one more example with respect to the outliers also okay so if i go on the top over here you can see the spearman correlation for this variable you can see that it is showing 0.84 for pearson correlation it is showing 0.67 i can definitely see that okay it is linearly increasing but there are some amount of outliers also over here right there are some amount of outliers also so using the same formula i'm doing this but you can see that with the help of pearson correlation which just focuses on linear aspects right this is actually having the value as 0.67 so more clear understanding of the correlation between x and y is clearly done in spearman correlation so most of the things like whenever you're using heat map whenever you are actually trying to find out correlation it uses this technique that is spearman correlation and it actually helps us to find out the real correlation between x and y okay so yes uh, this was a small video for uh, spearman 
rank correlation always remember the rank is the most important one here also we are trying to find out the pearson correlation but we are considering the covariance of rank of x comma rank of y divided by standard deviation of rank of x and standard deviation of rank of y okay now this basically indicates that and if i if i show you one more example over here if i go on the top you can see that what is happening in this particular case a small increase in x a small increase suppose this is my x1 and x2 right i know x2 will always be greater than x1 in terms of rank okay how much it is increasing how much it is decreasing that we cannot know here we are having a non linear increase right so similarly we are y2 and y1 right here also we know that the rank of y2 will be greater than y1 so by this so by this we will be able to explain it pretty much easily and make sure that you also explain in a specific way most of the uh, correlation that we have which we do in the exploratory data analysis uses this fairman rank correlation coefficient so yes this was all about this particular video i hope you like it please do subscribe the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all bye bye